hello everyone. Um, my name is Mason Christensen again. Um, I gotten into this topic for a couple reasons. Um, basically because I am in college, I have a history and a geography degree. So basically I am the biggest landscape nerd there is. I really like talking about kind of how history affects landscapes and how, how it affects geography in general. Um, I've also, I mean, it's, I've loved talking about roads because I've traveled so much as a kid and it's one of my favorite subjects in history to talk about. So today, um, Ed is right, this is a bit of a repeat lecture. Um, about half the material I kind of covered before in a previous lecture. Um, this one though, I've kind of decided to focus more on West Dearborn, just so I can be a little bit more specific about some of the streets here. There's a lot of, because West Dearborn, this area is from 1833. There's a lot of really great stories that relate to that early history on this side of town. Um, that East Dearborn has some great stories too, but they tend to focus more upon, upon just specific landowners. So to start with today, I'm gonna to kind of get into a little bit of an introduction of how the road system developed in this area. Um, I'm gonna go from there really more, most of the time I'm gonna be talking about kind of the individual roads in the area. So to start with, you look at this map here, look at all these red lines. This is an archeology span atlas. Um, was produced in 1931 by this University of Michigan professor uh, Hinsdale. Basically, it's important because these are the first roads in the area. And you notice, like, what are the ones that are showing here in Dearborn? You notice right here, there's US 12, basically also known as the Sauk Trail. Uh, that is showing up. This one, though, I bet many of you are probably not very familiar with. That is what we know today, we call today Ann Arbor Trail. Back before the Ford came around and the like, Ann Arbor Trail used to continue on um, through where Fairlane was later built. Um, it continued on basically down the River Rouge and all the way to the uh, basically River Rouge, uh, Delray, that area in general. For a long time, that was really the most important road. Michigan Avenue is actually a fairly recent um, you know, construction project. Basically, there's a number of uh, diaries and the like to talk about people heading west through Dearborn. Actually from Detroit, instead of going directly to where Dearborn is now, they would take a boat down to the mouth of the Rouge and then basically go up via wagon up this Ann Arbor Trail and they would you know, then cut onto the Sauk Trail. And that made that intersection where the, the Sauk Trail and Ann Arbor Trail meet that made it into a really important intersection. You have in 1800, way out there, you have a distillery that actually opened up, processing extra grain. About 20 years later, you have Ten Ike's Tavern that opens up there at that intersection um, to cater to passing visitors. So really, you could argue if in the 1830s, if the US military did not come to Dearborn, that probably would have been the center of this city. So I talk about Ann Arbor Trail because to the early history of the city, it's really important. Uh, this image from 1900 shows um, the road really a little bit further south of Michigan Avenue. Basically the road is, it becomes the North Dearborn Road and is almost completely obliterated when Ford opens his Rouge plant in 1915. Um, it, the Rouge plant cuts off a major section of it and the rest of the road pretty much just languishes and dies. If you look here, this is a 1941 aerial photo. Ann Arbor Trail is kind of right there. Um, part of the road becomes the entrance to Fairlane, and then this part down here, it's just this little dirt path that it sticks around, but when TPC Golf Course uh, gets built, it gets completely obliterated. So really, what, this road that was really one of the most important roads in the area, surprisingly, just gets completely destroyed over time. On to Michigan Avenue. Um, Michigan Avenue is kind of interesting to talk about because really for the longest time, we didn't know of it as Michigan Avenue. Obviously it was the Sauk Trail, but then even when Dearborn was first founded in the 1800s, it's known as the Chicago Road. It gets its name from that because of a, a construction project. Basically the US government authorized a military road to be built from Detroit to Chicago in the 1820s. 
Um, before that, basically the direct path between Dearborn and Detroit was just a swampy little path. Um, this was the first time, in, starting in the late 1820s, when that's improved, you have, this is the first time you have a decent road between Detroit and Dearborn. And because of this whole project, it's called, a, it's called a Chicago Road. Really, Michigan Avenue, until about 1900, is pretty much just a name used in Detroit's city limits. It, you know, it's first used, I think, 1831, but it only shows up on Dearborn maps around 1900. As for the other streets, so what's going on? When Michigan Avenue is being laid out, most of the, a number of other streets in the area are being constructed. And really, they're being done by, they're being authorized by the township governments. I know everybody t today complains about road quality. I mean, you all hate the roads I know. There's so many potholes. Imagine if the, town, the local township says, hey, you, you got to go build out a road to your farm. Basically, you have the township at, you know, as a form of taxation saying you had to spend some time building roads. Um, it was, and the end result is basically you have a lot of terrible roads. I mean, it, you're using, people are using farm equipment, using graders that they own and the like to construct roads, smooth out roads. They're not really using any kind of, say, asphalt. They're not using any kind of gravel. You know, the end result is basically the road grid initially outside of, say, Michigan Avenue and maybe a few plank roads is really terrible. And it's, it's because the township government is just not, is really taking kind of a hands-off approach. You don't really get improvement in roads until the 1900s when s groups like the Wayne County Road Commission come along, uh, the State Highway Department. That doesn't really come along until the 1900s. You know, what's kind of interesting, we have a number of township uh, road record books. You know, they talk about basically the taxes authorized, the, the labor required of people in this area. They talk about how, like, you know, basically, you know, to pay your, your uh, township road debts, you've got to spend this amount of time and, you know, and invest this amount of money in fixing up this bridge on Michigan Avenue or something like that. Um, there's a receipt I came across by, from Henry Ford's father that is a um, record saying that he used $100. It's like a receipt given to the Township Road Commission saying he spent $100 on materials for bridge building. I don't know, like, I would hate having to be involved as a resident in the area, having to literally go out there and actually build the road myself. You know, I tried to find good road building images for this area. The closest I could find was some from uh, the, the Detroit Public Library website. You know, see here, they basically got a horse team pulling a grader, smoothing out the road. That's as good as you get for road quality, you know, for the most part. Unless, like, Michigan Avenue had some planks laid out in it, so it was a little bit better than most of the other roads. But, you know, this is your average road in the 19th century for the most part. There's very, maybe not many roads in the United States in general that be any better than this outside of cities. And this is kind of an example of township level construction. You know, this is a, yeah, this is the Michigan Avenue Bridge before I think about 1905 uh, over the Rouge River. Yeah, that is just the crappiest looking bridge there is. I mean, it really is. And I mean, this is just, this is the county basically saying, this is why we have a county road department. You know, it's like, look at, before us, look at how terrible this Michigan Avenue Bridge is. You know, it's, because this was in one of the old Wayne County Road Commission reports, uh, basically promoting how good, great they are. <laughs> so getting back to the smaller streets here. So while Michigan Avenue is being improved, uh, you have a number in the old village of Dearborn itself that was founded in 1833, you have a number of streets that are very quickly created. And really because the town was created in 1833, understandably the roads are going to be named for 1830s people. So you have obviously Mason Street that's named after the guy there in the picture, Governor Stephen T. Mason this guy right here. Um, you have Howard Street, who was named after Joshua Howard, who was the founder of the village of Dearborn. Uh, you have got, like Porter Street, who was named after this very not well-known governor who died of cholera in Detroit, I think in 1833, 34. Um, and then this guy, where you are now on Brady Street, 
named after Hugh Brady, a general in the US Army, a guy who was in a number of different wars. Um, he was very well known. He, he, Fort Brady up at Sault Ste. Marie was named after him. Um, you had, you know, he was also commander in the, of the US Army here in Detroit um, in the 1830s and 40s, so he was a fairly well-known guy. A number of the streets I'm gonna talk about here tonight are kind of roads that were named after various communities in the area. Um, I wanted to, for this talk, for something different, I wanted to talk about some of the major roads that many of us drive, that it's a little bit more obvious where it gets its name from. Uh, one of them, the Southfield Highway. You know, this one I was just kind of curious about because it doesn't really go through, say, downtown Southfield. It go, you know, kind of goes off to the side. Here in Dearborn, Southfield Road uh, used to be named Emerson after the Emerson family. Um, very early on, it was a very continuous road going all the way up into Oakland County. So up in Redford, it was initially called uh, Mill Street, I think. Um, and then up in Oakland County, up in Birmingham, let's see, over here, very early on maps, it was actually called Southfield Road. Basically, you have this, the name of the Southfield Expressway, you have Birmingham to blame, um, pretty much. If, you know, if you'd rather have Emerson Expressway, you can really blame Birmingham for this. Because up here in the village of uh, Birmingham, Southfield Road, it's extending there from Maple, it's, it is the road into Southfield Township. Um, very early on, I think it was named that at least by the 1870s, Southfield Road, it, it's continuing on to pretty much the county line. Um, it uses anywhere in Oakland County very early on, it's called Southfield Road. When the Wayne County Road Commission comes around in the early 20th century, they like standardizing roads. They understand it's really confusing when you go say cross county lines, cross township lines, having a different road name every few miles. And so very early on, Southfield Road, the name gets extended into Redford and a few years later gets extended into Dearborn. And I just wanna show this again. This is just a really cool graphic. Um, really, Michigan Avenue and the Southfield Expressway, or Southfield Road really at the time, this was really the first kind of highway interchange in the area. It's really, it's just two four lane roads really crossing each other, but you have this sort of pseudo highway interchange that's built in the late 20s. I just kind of like this illustration in general. And this is another kind of little pick of the, South, the early Southfield Expressway before it was upgraded to full highway standards. You know, this is from 1943, I think. You know, some of these pictures, some of these slides I'm just sharing just as an excuse to share cool pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Westwood, Westwood is one, um, it's really a minor street, but I wanted to talk about it because it's also the name of a school district out there in Dearborn Heights. You know, it's originally Westwood was basically referred to this restaurant that I got a postcard of and a little advertisement for. Really, I can't find any trace of the, of the name being used in the you know, West Side area any earlier than this restaurant. Really, this restaurant, the Westwood Auto Inn was an extremely popular place to go for people from Detroit. Um, you go out there, you get, you know, it's a nice place to get alcohol, it's a nice place to get nice chicken dinners, nice frog dinners. It's out there, I think open around 1913, and it's a really popular place. And almost as soon, within a year or two after it's open, you, you start having more references in the newspaper to an area out there called Westwood. I think really the restaurant gave an identity to the whole area. When you get into the 1920s, that neighborhood actually considered trying to incorporate as its own village. So you could have had a separate, in between Dearborn and say Inkster, you could have had a separate Westwood village around kind of the Dearborn Heights strip in that area. You know, basically the town never really incorporated, but that's where, you know, the street gets its name, that's where the school district that formed in Dearborn Heights gets its name, basically from this restaurant. That to me, I, I just find that highly amusing. One of them, the, one of the roads I like to talk about too is Oakwood Boulevard because Oakwood, it was named after this village that used to exist in Detroit. It's uh, basically, if you know where the Marathon Oil Refinery is in Detroit, it's kind of a really industrial, not very nice area. Back in the day, Oakwood was very much 
a nice place. Uh, you know, it's named after all these oak trees that would have been along the Rouge River. Um, basically, this guy, um, Al Albert Peppers, he's the, old, the original real estate developer in the area, creates a subdivision named Oakwood, and he's kind of promoting how nice a place it is. I mean, he, one, this little ad here, this is just a really great one. He's basically saying, Sandwich Islands or Hawaii, that's too far away, you can't make it there. Go to my subdivision, it's just as nice. I mean, yeah, it's like, great, let's go to the Marathon Oil Refinery and you know, we'll enjoy just as much as Hawaii. Like, okay. But even, you know, even then, he's basically saying, enjoy, basically saying, enjoy my oak forest paradise because it's just as great as Hawaii. Yeah. You know, I found this, this interesting postcard here. It's, it was um, found it online, actually, but it's an advertisement of the Oakwood development. And it really, it's, it's promoting this ideal landscape, this ideal kind of oak forest landscape. But like I said, when you drive down Oakwood Boulevard, it's basically, it's named because it's the road to this. Another one, Cherry Hill. This is kind of one of those random small towns of Wayne County, you know, trivia things that I have to point out. Cherry Hill is actually a village in Canton Township, very much on the west side of Canton Township. Um, Cherry Hill Road basically goes all the way out there, out to Washtenaw County, and it's named because of this village. Um, you know, it used to be called Northview Street, named after the cemetery in town, but as soon as the Wayne County Road Commission extended Cherry Hill out west to that town, uh, they renamed it. Military Street is one that, you know, it, it really gained the Military Street name because it was one of the first to go through military property here in Dearborn, going north toward Dearborn Heights in Detroit. Um, it used to be, at one point, it was called Coons Road because in that area, that the northern part of Dearborn Heights along the river there, there was a community called Coonsville or Coons Mill, um, which is what that image is there. That's Coons Mill. Um, it really was kind of one of the more major communities in the northern part of what is now Dearborn Heights. And so it was really, it was built as a road to get people to that community originally. And another one, I've kind of stuck in, in this uh, talk, I, I really kind of felt like sticking in all these roads that I frequently drive myself in this side of town. Outer Drive is one that it's, it's pretty obvious what the name is, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the story that basically Outer Drive was conceived of as an outer bypass of Detroit in the 1910s. But the people conceiving of it were a bit of a cheapskate. Uh, you know, some major roads in you know, the Detroit area, they actually acquired the land and actually built nice brand new wide roads. Outer Drive, they decided, we're gonna be cheap and just follow existing roads. And so it's why when you look at Outer Drive around the city, it's a bit of a mishmash. It's why you have to do all these turns to continue going on Outer Drive, going around the city. And it takes, because of this, it takes years to build. Um, it takes, you know, it, it's not really finished in the Dearborn area until about 1931 when they finally rename a bunch of streets here. You have, you know, portion of Military Street, Fordson Street, Hamilton Boulevard. Um, eventually there's uh, Snow Street and Pepper Road down in Allen Park down there. All of those become part of Outer Drive. So like just here in this little area of Dearborn, you have a number of different streets that are borrowed and used. Yeah, I just kind of like this here, basically promoting come to Dearborn because there's gonna be this new giant 150 foot Outer Drive. You know, they had different ideas of highways back, especially this was done in that ad is from like 28. You know, any kind of four lane road in 28 is pretty much a highway. And so they, they're almost envisioning this outer drive when it's built as sort of an expressway. The run road I found really the most difficult to, to research and talk about in general is Telegraph Road. Um, Telegraph, a lot of the information I found just didn't make sense, was really, it was hard to research. Um, it was, and there was very little detail online or in libraries about it. You know, you try going to like the Detroit Public Library or Taylor Public Library and ask about like, what do you have on like 19th century Taylor? They got nothing. You know, even in Taylor, they got like nothing on 19th century Taylor. It's kind of amazing actually. 
Um, on this, so like I had to really dig in and, and do a lot of research to figure out what was going on with Telegraph Road through from Dear Warning to Taylor. Um, basically, just for a little background, before Telegraph Road was built, there was actually an old pre, a previous main road south toward Flat Rock. And you, you wouldn't believe it, but it's actually Party Street. Party Street was actually the old main road south. Um, over time though, this guy here, John James Speed, decides to build a bunch of telegraphs in this area. Um, the first one he builds in 1847 runs along the Michigan Central Railroad, you know, the main east-west railroad through Dearborn, um, just south of Michigan Avenue. He builds that. That's the first uh, telegraph line to Detroit. But he and competitors want to build a line connecting Detroit to the east coast. Those lines have to run south um, because they don't want to build them through Canada. And so Basically, him and a competitor build telegraph lines to the city, to Detroit from the East Coast. One of those two lines is definitely built along Telegraph Road. Um, most likely because this guy already built a telegraph line along the railroad here in Dearborn, it's probably him that built the telegraph line along Telegraph Road. I know, it's all a bit... I had to go very nerdy in researching telegraph, in telegraph Road because you had to really dig into newspaper articles and really dig in and try to figure out who's building what, what's the time frame, try to examine a bunch of different maps of telegraphs. Um, if you look here, this is kind of my one proof that basically Telegraph Road was one of those early lines. Um, this, is a, a article, this is a legislative act from 1850, basically talking about how this plank road that's to be built from Flat Rock North is supposed to be built along this road where the telegraph wires already run from Flat Rock to Dearborn. There's only two lines that run south of Detro the Detroit area by 1850. I know I'm getting confusing here, but it's, 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 a hard, it's a really hard story to navigate. Basically what I'm trying to say, Telegraph Road is named after one of the first telegraph lines to reach Detroit. So this map here just shows Taylor Taylor Township in 1860. And what's kind of interesting on it is here's Party Street over here. You have all the older house, most of the older houses in town. There's a lot more old houses along Party Street. What I'm trying to get at here is that Telegraph Road is kind of this newer road to help with the telegraph line. It's built straighter. It's, you know, so at, in the end, when they're building wider roads in the future, you're gonna obviously pick the straighter road, and that's how Telegraph Road became the main street in the area. And here, basically, Telegraph Road early on, it's pretty small, not really that major a road. Nobody really lived in Taylor until the 20th century, for the most part. It's a really small township, so you don't really need big roads. Um, here, like this is, let's see, Telegraph Road at Eureka and Taylor, 1919. Um, yeah, that's, it's what, how many lanes now? It's like what, in that area, probably six or more, six or, six or eight even. You know, really, it's like this until you get in the 1910s, when the federal government gets involved giving money to Wayne County and the state to improve it. Um, basically, by 1923, you know, originally it only went as far as Michigan Avenue. By 1923, it extends as far north as Grand River. Um, you know, gets up to Pontiac by the 30s. This is another one, I think this is down in Brownstown, West Road, kind of dirt. And this is the more shocking one up by Ford Road. Yeah, over here, yeah, that little dirt rutted path that's before 1923, after you got a nice little narrow paved road. I know, it's a little bit different. So, for my final part of this talk, I wanted to talk really more about real estate developers. Basically, the major streets, you know, they, they're developed for a bunch of different reasons, but most of the, the minor streets that you see in the city, most of those are named after the realtors in town. Um, the guys who are developing the individual subdivisions, uh, it's, they're doing it for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes you have subdivisions that are developed um, just because like the guy wants to honor his mother, things like that. Other times they're just picking names that sound cool. Uh, one, you know, in, and in other cases, on, sometimes they're just honoring people. In this case, in Gregory Street in the Ford Homes neighborhood, 
Uh, Fred Gregory is kind of one of those unsung heroes of Dearborn history that nobody's heard of. The guy was Ford's real estate agent, and he bought for, for Ford all of his land for the Ford Rouge plant. Bought much of the, helped buy much of the land for the Ford homes and a bunch of other Ford projects. Um, unfortunately, Fred died in 1918. In the Ford Homes area, Gregory Street used to be uh, Foley Avenue. It got renamed to Gregory in 1919. Clearly not a coincidence. Another developer-related one that really surprised me when I first learned it is Garrison Street. Garrison Street down here, if you know the history of the arsenal, you probably originally, like me, thought Garrison probably named after a military garrison. No, it's actually named after this guy. Uh, Mr. Garrison here, Charles Garrison, he was a Detroit merchant who helped develop a subdivision at the far west end of Garrison Street. And as a result, his name was attached to the road. This guy is another one who, uh, Robert Grinley, his names are all over the place in West Dearborn. Grinley was very early. He was developing subdivisions left and right in the 1900s and 1910s um, all over the Detroit area. You know, you probably obviously know Grinley Park um, and the like. That's probably his biggest single one in West Dearborn. Um, but he's also doing all these other little ones like Little Farms and a bunch of the others. And what's key about these subdivisions is they're happening like 1910, 1912, 1913, 1915. This is before Ford even announces his Ford tractor plant in the area. It's like incredibly early. You know, this one here, uh, people have often asked about where Dearborn gets its whole college street name theme in, in the west side of the city. It's him, it's Robert Grinley. It's Grinley's fault. If you, if you hate the college street names or you think, you know, you don't like them at all, like if you look here, this is the earliest one where I could track down the college streets. Like I think Harvard is one in this one. This is like Little Farms number four done by Robert Grinley and it's dated from like 1913, I think. But it's, he's doing the college street name theme. Um, he's stretching it out into all of his other subdivisions and because it's the 1910s before all these other subdivisions are fully built, you know, basically his names are, take precedence. When new subdivisions are built around his, um, basically, you know, there it forces the other developers to borrow use his names, and even when other sub you know developers choose different names, oftentimes the city eventually, you you know, extends these college names out. That's basically what happens. So, like I said, on the west side of the city, Robert Grinley is probably the most influential street name guy. If you look at it here, this is a 1917 map. You see down here, like here's the core of West Dearborn. Down here, Southwest Dearborn. See all these streets down here, this is all Robert Grinley. You know, like I said, all these subdivisions are pretty much done by Robert Grinley. So you can imagine, because he's there so early, that's how his street names really got extended all over that part of the city. One, yeah, people asked me about, last time I gave this lecture, people asked me about Silverly, Silverly, yeah, Silverly Lane. One common theme with all these subdivisions is that basically developers are using street names to promote their subdivision. They want to make their subdivision look nice, seem like it's a subdivision for a good sort of people. And so that's why, like, with college, you know, with Robert Grinley, he's using college names to make it seem like educated people belong there. You know, that's kind of, yeah, that's basically what's going on. Like, he's trying to make it seem like it's a nice sort of people belong there. You know, here with Silvery Lane, it's basically the developer of the Dearborn View subdivision is trying to make it seem like it's a nice and pleasant place to live with the street names. So, like, here you have, let's see, the other streets you have, no, let's see, it's Robindale and I think Nightingale, things like that. They're kind of nice, pleasant sounding names that are you know, used in this subdivision. You're promoting an idea. This is kind of in the far northwest side of town. It's a bit more rural and pleasant and there's a bit more of a hilly landscape than some of the other areas of town. You know, you're trying to come across that this is a great, nice, pleasant place to live where you're gonna get away from like the vices of city life. Pretty much, that's kind of the general idea that what's going on here. That's how you're getting a name like Silvery Lane.
out here. It's just basically the developer's choice to promote his neighborhood. And my final little one to talk about, kind of a continuation of this theme is Dearborn Hills. Dearborn Hills in general, that neighborhood, it's using their street names along with everything else to promote the really exclusivity of the neighborhood. I mean, you look at these newspaper ads here, you know, they're promoting, it's like, uh, you know, like an American community and just like see Dearborn Hills first. It's like the greatest neighborhood, you know, promoting these nice houses, um, just kind of the exclusive landscape in general. Street names are basically part of this marketing campaign. You know, you look at here, healthier and safer for children in Dearborn Hills. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it, it, I know, it's, it's just kind of great. These, these really kind of bragging ads that you find in like the Detroit newspapers. I mean, this was developed by, you know, the Hannon Real Estate Exchange Company. Like the founder of that company was at one point the head of the National Association of Realtors. So like he was a big deal in the realty community. What year was that? Oh, the, the neighborhood or what? Yeah. Um, it was mostly, let's see, 23, 24 was kind of the peak of the neighborhood, I would say, when it was at least the lots were first sold. Um, it wasn't fully developed, though, till probably after World War II. Basically, this is the guy who was running, you know, in the 20s, this guy on screen here who's running the company. He's the guy, you know, in charge of the company, in charge of the people who are coming up with the names of the streets. Uh, and you look at here, like look at some of the street names, uh, Beachmont, Claremont, Lafayette, Denwood, you know, Vernon, Waverly. You know, I was curious, I looked up Waverly, that, you know, where Waverly came from because it's also a street in my hometown. And Waverly is actually, it's a, it's a novel by Sir Walter Scott. It was like the first, um, it was the first like uh, historical fiction novel done in like 1810. Uh, you look at Vernon, Vernon is kind of a, aristocratic English family. Uh, there are some English admirals with that name. Um, you look at here, Lafayette, you know, Mar the named after the Marquis de Lafayette. You get here, like, you know, you look at these names, they're very much high-end, exclusive sort of names. You know, they're really promoting, you know, the, exclusive, the exclusivity of the neighborhood. You know, this, this uh, company that, you know, the Hannon Real Estate Exchange was very picky with who would settle there. You know, uh, some of the developments that they did, they had conditions basically saying if you bought a lot here, you have to build a house of a certain size and a certain cost. You need to, you know, not use things like cement building materials. Sorry, you can't sell alcohol from your house in your neighborhood. You know, things like that, you know. And so it's promoting, it's all, like I said, all this all connects together. It's the street name is just an arm of promoting the neighborhood. And that's pretty much it. Any questions?